Okay, so not funded by Monster. Yeah. But I do endorse them. Nonetheless, um, white freezy flavor. So the thought that came to mind was that this whole war in perspective isn't about what's happening now. Hopefully, the people are saying, you know, they sent drones, they attacked people, 10 civilians died. Uh, every <laughs> 20 million people, or 10 million, however many people are still in Ukraine, um, lost their power in the attacks. Um, you know, think if the entire power system went out in the U.S., how many people would die of just losing power? So you got to see it in perspective of what's actually uh, the actual damage. Is it the three people who died in the attack or the uh, 10 million people that uh, are out of power? Um, so, you know, war munitions, materials, transport, logistics, communications, propaganda, television, all that stuff shut down. So the three people dying that maybe the focus in Western media isn't actually the uh, big event. Uh, the big event was that their entire power grid was destroyed. Why aren't we seeing that? Because it would show Russia as actually being effective and doing things that will win their war. And again, it shows the propaganda and that if you see the message they're sending as opposed to what the message should be, um, then there's definite malfeasance involved because they're trying to dumb down the situation and present a view that's beneficial to them as opposed to saying what's actually happening. Um, oh, nonetheless, that wasn't even why I started this uh, video. Um, but this one was to raise the point that it's not about what's happening now. It's about what the final escalation is. Because if you're playing a game of chess... You shouldn't be looking at the move you're making. You should be looking at the game. And how many steps ahead are you from that? So what is the final escalation? And again, I think a lot of people are talking about the moves being made. Oh, he moved his knight and took a pawn. Um, but what's the checkmate? What is the final, final result of the game? And... And the, the realization that came to me, and I guess this is the fear factors, you're supposed to fear this, I don't fear this. Again, I don't fear death, so whatever, life is what it is. Um, but uh, if, say it were to go nuclear, say biological war, whatever it happens to be, um, who has the f nuclear bunkers? And, you know, for me, I don't have a nuclear bunker. This bird doesn't have a nuclear bunker. Um, so who is actually going to benefit from this? Who's going to survive it? And again, I think a lot of prepper channels have pointed out that the elites and government officials, they've all been saying, you know, go to your secret government facilities or go to your government facilities, go to your bunkers. Um, <laughs> flashback from the day after. Um, and the day after, if you haven't uh, noticed it, it actually is a movie I've watched before. Um, a lot of older people probably have, because apparently it was a super popular movie. But uh, the day after is sort of about this escalation in Berlin, um, initially. Uh, so East Berlin, West Berlin, it used to be a big issue in the Cold War, uh, because uh, Soviets controlled access to the uh, east side of the city, I guess is what it is. Um, so this movie was premised on this escalation to nuclear conflict that involves strategic nuclear weapons after tactical use. And, you know, now it's in Ukraine, which used to be part of the uh, Soviet Union. The funny thing is, though, that that movie does refer to the Soviets as the Russians. So I guess, uh, you know, even the Soviet Union was the Russians. It wasn't, uh, you know, the Ukrainians, even though they were part of it. And it does call back to, you know, who, who, who was the, who were the people that were running the show, you know? So <clears throat> I don't think it was that way necessarily because Russian ethnicity and Soviet identity, it's something beyond my personal knowledge to talk about. So that final escalation. So in this movie, um, basically so, so some good effects, um, and people died, and then they had a peace, apparently, or that was the occupation message. But, uh, 
just the reality that it doesn't take a lot. Um, there have been near calls in the past, and there's nothing stopping it from happening again, other than the unwillingness. And then some people even are like, again, the message is that, you know, nuclear weapons may not even work because the tritium degrades over time, and it may cause a problem with the uh, explosions. But if you look at the freaking Poseidons, the fact is they actually do replace the nuclear warheads. The warheads they have aren't 50-year-old or 100-year-old warheads. Um, they're, they actually upgrade and refurbish. Unlike the U.S., uh, officially, um, the Russians continued to produce plutonium or had plutonium stockpiles. Um, I think the U.S. more or less put a ban on production of plutonium. I could be wrong, but I remember reading a while back, like five, ten years ago, that they weren't able to produce more plutonium and they weren't actually even recycling their reactor rods and whatnot. Um, so maybe it's U.S. nuclear weapons don't actually work anymore because they haven't produced any new uh, weapons grade materials. So they have old warheads, but I could be wrong. And I have no idea what the state of the U.S. nuclear defense is or U.S. nuclear strategic nuclear forces are. I, I would think they're probably okay. Um, I wouldn't want to gamble on whether they're working or not. Um, all that said, um, I think it's important to at least consider that this whole conflict, and it could just blow over, who knows, um, you know, the recession could just magically disappear, and maybe I won't have to go to school tomorrow because my homework isn't done, but <sighs> the thing is, things are probably going to go ahead, you're probably going to have to get up, you're probably going to have to go to school, that's just the way it works, and if you don't have your homework done, then uh, you're pretty much screwed, so you better do your homework. Um, same with this war is it maybe it won't happen but if uh, it does happen and by this war I mean hot war between NATO and Russia and you know eventual tactical use of weapons due to escalation um, due to one side winning and this is the problem is that if Russia loses guess who gets the nukes first unless there's first strike because they're like oh they're going to use their nukes and then who knows but uh what it comes down to is that conventional war between major powers, nuclear powers, hasn't been tested before in this way. So um, there's a lot that can go wrong. <laughs> and the people that live this and develop this uh, strategic balance, and this goes back to SDI in the 80s also, is that uh, the Strategic Defense Initiative, space lasers, whatever, Star Wars, they basically was like, Russia's like, we don't like this because, um, you know, it neutralizes our nuclear uh, mutual assured destruction. And uh, that means that we're defenseless and you can just tell us what to do. So uh, we're just going to skip on this one. You don't make them. We won't nuke you. No, everything can go nice. So however the backroom deals happened and what happened, SCI was apparently shelved. But now we're back to the point of, you know, hypersonic missiles. This is all the stuff they're saying. These weapons are game changers. If anybody gets these, it's game over because it will totally unbalance the whole strategic equalization or the balance of power. And that balance of power has been getting pushed with uh, missile defense and so on and so forth. And to be honest, while these issues were going, deployment of missile defense in Europe and so on and so forth, raising of the fact you can't defend against nuclear missiles. There's very few interceptors, yada, yada, yada. Although the Ukrainians are apparently, if the propaganda is true, shooting down cruise missiles with uh, man pads. But <clears throat> I don't know if that's true or not. But if it's the case, you know, more reason for everybody to have guns because then you can shoot at the killer drones coming after you and maybe you'll get lucky and take them down. But no, in some places, everybody's losing their weapons, nonetheless. The strategic balance is changing very quickly. And you're turning into a point where the individuals no longer have the power, if they ever did have it. And you have autonomous weapon systems, like even the uh, Patriot missiles, they're somewhat autonomous. They can be controlled to an extent, but they're autonomous interceptions. So if you have AI drones and self-flying attack systems and you know the russian iranian whatever they happen to be systems they're relatively um low tech so it doesn't take a lot but um 
what was I even on about? Oh yeah, the escalation. So no, Skynet is coming. Um, I think I think it's uh, it's it's uh, unique that people are stuck in the moment what is happening right now as opposed to what the final solution is and I think for a lot of preppers they're also going to be um, calling out that you need to get ready for food shortages or food price increases <clears throat> CBDC digital currency mark of the beast whatever it happens to be um, you know I can't even post about technologies that you know self healing roads sequestration systems for industrial processes, uh, new fuel systems. Can't even post that stuff anymore. It's They have their narrative and how they want things to progress. And anybody who has a contrary message or one that preempts their message, they got rid of it. So I don't know, man. I'm not concerned because, you know, I'm just living life. But uh, I think that the world is changing. And uh, I'm not sure if people are for this and if they're aware of it but um hopefully you see the whole game if you want to play then hopefully you have thought out the game not just the moves